Hey everybody, thank you so much for clicking on this video. So being able to do a pull up has been a goal of mine for years. And honestly, I never understood why I couldn't do it because I am strong, or at least I look strong, but I literally could never just pull myself up. And it was something I always said that I wanted to do and I would stick to it for like three days and then be like, this is hard and I would give up. So in the month of July through my company, I ran something called the Summer Strength Challenge where essentially I would work with you on creating a SMART goal where we would implement a plan with habits to get you through the month and hopefully you would achieve that goal by the end of four weeks. So I set my own SMART goal. My end result was to be able to do a pull-up, right? So my SMART goal ended up being, I will perform my pull-up program three times a week to get closer to doing a pull-up. So I did a ton of research to develop this program to get me to that goal by the end of four weeks and I did it, I can do a pull up. So today I'm gonna share that entire experience with you. So we're gonna walk through this week by week and I also will leave a link below in the description box where you can download this program for yourself. But first, let's jump into the prep work. So like I said, I started out by doing a lot of research on the best exercises to help progress your pull-ups. The exercises that I predominantly stuck to were dumbbell rows, inverted rows, TRX chin-ups, eccentric pull-ups, and then scapular pull-ups. Here and there, you'll kind of see me throwing in some other random exercises just because I tend to get bored really quickly, but essentially what we're focusing on are rowing or pulling motions to strengthen the muscles of the back, specifically the lats. The lats are gonna be the prime mover in any kind of pull-up movement. And I knew here right off the bat that the key was going to be consistency. So like I said, I set a SMART goal. If you've never heard me talk about SMART goals before, SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Relevant, and Time Bound. So just making sure that everything was very specific toward me and that I had an end goal in mind, which was four weeks. And honestly, this program that I made only ended up taking like 15 to 20 minutes of my day. So it was really easy for me to sneak it in in between clients or in between editing as something was exporting. And I I didn't get super sweaty during it either, which was like another really big pro so that I didn't have to like shower right after I was done. So once I created this program, I actually sat down, went into my calendar and I would block out the entire month of when I would be doing this program. So I use Google Calendar and when I have something that I'm going to do during the day, but I'm not sure when I'm gonna do it, I just put it right at the top as an all day event. And then the night before, I'll look at my schedule and I'll usually drag it down into its own little 15, 20, 30 minute slot. And for me, this is really helpful helpful because if it's in my calendar, I am exponentially more likely to do it. So let's dive into week one. Week one ended up being a little lighter weight and higher volume with the training because I really just wanted to like get my back activated and working. I talked about it before, but as a society, we are pretty push dominant or anterior dominant. So meaning that the muscles in charge of pushing like chest, triceps, quads, things like that are usually a little bit stronger than the muscles on the back of our body, which just to be general, are more involved in the pulling action. So really week one was just to give my back a ton of attention. I always made sure to start these sessions with a warm up if I hadn't moved yet today, but then I jump into the dumbbell row or kettlebell row for week one. I started with 25 because it was pretty high volume and I knew that I could get through 10 reps and still have a few left in the tank. Then I made my way into a TRX inverted row. Obviously, these are gonna be ideal like in a squat rack because you can change the height to really progress it, but this is a really solid plan B. And if you don't have anything like this at home, honestly, I would just sub in more like pull-up variations like assisted or just more eccentric, which we're gonna talk about next. Now, if you do have access to a TRX, you're gonna wanna over shorten the straps and then try to get as under the mount as possible. Obviously it's a little bit harder when it's on a wall or a door, but it does get the job done. And for week one, I kept this grip neutral and a strict one-to-one -one tempo because my back really needed the help. And remember that that's okay. We want somewhere to progress to. After that, I did some eccentric pull-ups with a three second descent. So really trying to control on the way down. Now throughout my pull-ups, I actually chose a neutral grip the entire time. Overhand felt way too challenging to start with and underhand or chin-ups didn't actually target as much of the lats as I wanted to focus on. And then finally, I rounded it out with some TRX chin-ups. The chin-up motion is inherently easier because you're also recruiting the bicep to assist you. More muscles equals more strength in the movement. So this is gonna be the same strap setup on a TRX and you wanna think really vertical with your body to mimic the position as much as possible for an actual chin-up or pull-up. I like to spiral 
handle the hands as I come up. But if you're doing this on a straight bar, then just start with an underhand grip. And again, if you don't have access to anything like this at home, the best thing you can do is just like, add in more eccentric pull-ups. The more eccentric ones you do, the more likely you are at some point to like get a concentric one in there. Jumping into week two. So you're gonna start to notice that each week does look very similar. That's kind of the point of a very specific progressive program. But I did play with a few things here. Weight, reps and sets, and tempo. These things are really important to manipulate if you're working with the same exercises to actually progress yourself. So my plan for week two was to take the volume down but increase the intensity using those variables. So again, I took the reps way down for my dumbbell rows and I ended up increasing the weight to 30s and then 35s by the end of the third session, which I was very excited by. And my goal with these was always to have one or two reps left in the tank. I didn't want to work to complete failure, especially because this was the first exercise I was doing and I didn't even get to try the pull-ups yet. My inverted rows progressed to an overhand grip and a slower tempo, more like a two to two tempo. And looking at the footage, I actually could have gone even slower. Moving slowly is inherently more difficult because you're increasing that time under tension. So it just takes you longer to perform the exercise. And then I went into my eccentric pull-ups. You can see I actually got up a little high higher than week one. Look at that progression. And I added in a hold at the top this week. So I was trying for a three second hold at the top and then a three second descent. And then the TRX chin ups actually stayed about the same this week, even tempo up and down, but it does look like I had more control and endurance in the exercise. The newbie that I added this week was scapular pull ups. I did a ton of research and I decided to put these in rather than assisted pull ups because one of the hardest part of the pull up is just that shoulder retraction right at the beginning to get your up. And a lot of the research I read was that adding a band in just takes that work out of it. So it's really difficult to kind of get over that hurdle. This is kind of what I talk with my clients about, about push-ups on the knees versus push-ups on the toes. I'd rather progress you from your toes immediately than just have you do it on the knees because it is just exponentially harder on your core from the toes than on the knees. So this is what I read. This is why I did it. It worked. And then we made it into week three. So my strategy for this week was to take the volume down in the non pull up exercises and then increase the volume in my pull up exercises. That way I'm still working on strengthening the back, but the big focus is on my grip strength and really just getting that motion of like using the back to pull up my whole body. With the dumbbell rows, I graduated to 40 pounds in each hand. I would have much preferred having kettlebells at 40s because these adjustable dumbbells are so freaking bulky and they're really hard to maneuver, but they did get the job done. My inverted rows got a new tempo this week. I went eccentric, so up fast, hold, and then down slow. This is much more difficult because you can't use momentum, and again, you're working against gravity. I also, for some reason, one day supersetted it with some kind of like band lat pull downs. I don't know. I, I think I just got bored and like wanted to change it up. And then my eccentric pull ups progressed to a two second hold at the top, but a five second descent. This is the week I started to feel a huge difference in my overall pulling strength and my ability to get my face over the bar. And then finally, I ended all of these sessions with my 10 scapular pull ups. All right, we made it to week four. So, okay, so my the day before like my week four, like day one program started, I was like, you know what, let me just, let me just try, let me try a chin up. Cause I actually haven't tried those yet. Every time I've tried, it's just been a pull up. So I walk over and I'll show you take one right over here. Um, I got really close. Like this was the closest I'd ever been. Obviously I was very excited for an empty room. And then 10 minutes later, I'm like, okay, I know what that feels like now. Like I, I, I've got the scapular retraction. I understand like what it felt like. Let me, let me try it one more time. <laughs> and she's up and she's pumped and she's punching the air. Great. So I reached my goal a week early, which was super exciting, but I did wanna make sure that I still finish out the program. You know, getting a singular chin up is awesome, but like, Maybe let's try and get a few more. Also, because I reached my goal, I started to play around with the program a little bit. I completely omitted the dumbbell rows because I really just wanted to save my strength so I could perform as many chin-ups as possible. So this week I actually subbed the inverted row for a TRX wide row to incorporate more of my core. You just wanna make sure that you're pretty low in these to keep the challenge on the back. And then I brought the volume back up here slightly since the dumbbell rows were out of the program. Just a note, I did wanna focus on a little bit more core 
in all of this simply because doing a chin up or a pull up is actually like a full body exercise. A lot of people don't realize like that you really need to engage your core. So I, I just felt like since I knew I was gonna be doing more chin ups at this point, I wanted to get my core involved right at the beginning. So then after that, we hopped right into practicing chin ups. I would typically get one solid one and then they just progressively got lower and lower as I did more. But you know, that's to be expected, they're not easy. And then I'd move on to some eccentric pull ups with a one second hold and a 10 second descent. So really increasing the intensity in the lowering or the lengthening of the muscle. And then if my grip strength wasn't 100% shot, I would just go for some more of those scapular pull-ups. Whew, all right. That was a lot to talk through. So I hope that you guys found this video enjoyable. It has been requested for so freaking long. I am so excited that I can actually help you guys. As far as what I'm doing now, I am, every time I get up from my desk, I do a chin up. Every time I get up from the couch, I go do a chin up. And just increasing the volume is going to help. You can do the exact same thing, but just with an eccentric pull up if you don't have them yet. Definitely head to the description box below where you can go to my website and download your own free four week pull up program. And it's gonna give you the exact number of sets and reps. The weight is just up to you when you're choosing things for those dumbbell rows. I would love for you to let me know if you are working on a goal in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any content and I'll see you in the next one.